Let me take you on a journey to Phoenix, Arizona. UFOs are among us. South Mountain where the petroglyphs show evidence that the Indians knew all about this. March 13th, 1997, the UFOs show their presence. The Phoenix lights, oh, and it was seen by masses. Still people hating, still people doubting. Roosevelt came through and destroyed all the petroglyphs on the mountain. Cause they knew they amounted to something, but they didn't want to admit. Now we got rumors of a UFO base under the cliffs. Four Texans letting out lights. Call Jeff Woolwine a believer would be an understatement. He right. has dedicated his life to researching right UFOs. You can see Without snakes that film, the I believe that we wouldn't be discussing this topic today. Watch the uh, video cameras are the weapons in the southwest for Arizona the to Northern Desert UFOs are among us petroglyphs in the sky watch them UFOs fly by we in the southwest Arizona UFOs are among us reflecting back on history look I'm from Arizona so you know I spit heat there used to be some Indians running around here with some pins marking on the walls and now it's a new cause. They say it has something to do with UFOs, y'all. There's only one other guy who has something like together. this, and it's, you know, Jeff Wilwine. I'm gonna check it out, and even better. I call up someone Yo, like Crawfish. He's got video camera equipment. And a partner by the name of Jeff, who's got it on video camera. Don't test. We got real live information. Information. You know what we're saying. It's like I saw a vision. Looked at the sky over South Mountain, saw a glowing prism. Flying in the sky, moving left and right. Kinda hovering and goes out of sight. All these UFOs gotta say something about the petroglyphs. Being all the truth, all the ancient myths. A spirit's in the sky. Maybe these were starships. Indians wonder why. In the future, when times get rough, we'll all return to the mountain to get the answers to the question of humanity. humanity. All these ships, cure insanity. Petroglyphs in, in the, the sky. sky. Watch the UFOs fly by. Fly we by. in the Southwest Arizona. Arizona. Sonoran Desert UFOs are among, among us. us. Petroglyphs in the sky. Where? Watch the UFOs fly by. We in the Southwest Arizona. Arizona. UFOs are among us. He's some Indians running around here with some pins marking on the walls. Whoa. And now. It's a new cause. They say it has something to do with UFOs, y'all. I don't know. They put a connection together. I might check it out, and even better. I call up someone Yo, like Crawfish. He's got video camera equipment. And a partner by the name of Jeff, who's got it on video camera. Don't test. We got real live information. Information. You know what we're saying. It's like I saw a vision. Looked at the sky over South Mountain, saw a glowing prism. Flying in the sky, moving left and right. Kinda hovering and goes out of sight. All these UFOs gotta say something about the petroglyphs. Being all the truth, all the ancient myths. A spirit's in the sky. Maybe these were starships. Indians wonder why. In the future, when times get rough, we'll all return to the mountain to get the answers to the question of humanity. humanity. All these ships, cure insanity. Petroglyphs in, in the, the sky. sky. Watch the UFOs fly by. Fly we by. in the Southwest Arizona. Arizona. To and Desert, UFOs are among, among us. us. Petroglyphs in the sky. Where? Watch the UFOs fly by. We in the Southwest Arizona. Arizona. UFOs are among us.
are now the first of the Phoenix Light. We're actually written and connected by other What were these lights? What is an alien contact? Tonight, we explore the Phoenix Light in the sky with Jeff Woolwine from PetroducingTheSkies.com. UFO investigator in Phoenix, Arizona. He runs a Facebook live show called Petroglyphs in the Sky. I would call him the uh, the king of the petroglyphs. What you choose to believe about Jeff Woolwine and his petroglyph theories is entirely up to you. And whether he's a madman or a genius, I guess no one can say. What we can say is that ancient art is riddled with images of strange beings, wheels of fire, and with flying shields in the sky. Welcome back to the Petroglyphs in the Sky Ultimate UFO Show. I'm your host, Jeff Woolwine. How are you guys doing tonight? Great to have you with you tonight. Tonight we're going to talk about, you know, the Phoenix Lights. We're going to talk about the Petroglyphs, of course. We're going to talk about some of these day sightings. We're going to talk about the history of Phoenix, Arizona that hasn't been talked about in like 80 years or so. And... Uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting because, uh, you know, the, the first park ranger, Charles Holbert, you know, he knew about these lights. He knew about the spirits of the earth and sky. And, uh, you know, he knew about the tombs that are buried up there on South Mountain that, you know, no one's talking about today, you know. And why is this? We're going to go into that tonight. You know, it's really interesting that, uh, you know, we we see these petroglyphs on these rocks out here, not only here in South Mountain on the Valley of the Sun, but we see it all over the world and we just think, you know, oh, it's just graffiti, you know, they're just, uh, you know, it doesn't really have any meaning. But, you know what, if you really take a look, if you really take a look and understand what these petroglyphs are talking about, man, it's talking about our history. Okay, it's talking about where Earth really started at. It's like the beginning of time. It, they're telling a story. You know, it's, it's, it, they're trying to let us know throughout generations on what's to come. Because you know, you know, history repeats itself. And, uh, and that's the reason why we're seeing these things in the sky today. You know, we're going to talk about the Holocom Indians. The Holocom were, were the first people here in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, what does Holocom mean? Well, Holocom is a Pima name because the Pima Indians consider themselves ancestors to the Holocom. And we don't know what happened to these people. These people are here one day and gone the next and just up and vanished. They up and vanished with no trace of them. They ruled here for a thousand years. For a thousand years. Everything was fine. Well, <laughs> I guess. But they were here for a thousand years anyway. And then suddenly they were up and gone. No trace of them. Where'd they go? I don't know. Let's talk about it tonight. So the Pimas call these people the Hohokam, which means the people who are missing, the people who are gone, because we don't know what happened to these people. The people who had vanished or the people who got taken away. That's right. They got taken away. 
I believe this. I believe this. Because not only does the petroglyphs, the petro petroglyphs depict this, but so does the oral tradition from the Native Americans who really understand what the Phoenix Lights is and what these day sightings are that we're having now and what the petroglyphs mean. We're going to go on to the meaning of the petroglyphs. I'm going to show some of the carvings tonight. We're going to show some of the videos that match the carvings. And that, this is the reason why I called my research Petroglyphs in the Sky, is because that's what we're seeing. That's what we're seeing now. We're seeing these petroglyphs carved on the rocks. Now they're in the sky because the exact same thing was seen not only a thousand years ago, but at the beginning of time. And this is the reason why they're carved on the mountains. This is the reason why they're telling us a story. And we're going to go into that tonight. We're going to look deep into this. That we're going to talk about stuff that hasn't been talked about in 80 years. That, that the archaeologists don't talk about, but yet, but yet, it's clearly there on South Mountain. Not only South Mountain, around the Valley of the Sun, possibly in your neck of the woods also, if you, hook, if you look for it. And you understand. So the first park ranger, his name was Charles Holbrook. We're going to talk about him real quick. Let's bring him up. This is Charles Holbrook. C. M. Holbert. Welcome to the show, Charles. Now this guy was the first park ranger between the, the, the early uh, 1930s until the late 1940s. Okay? He was the first park ranger on South Mountain and he was in charge. Uh, he was in charge of protecting the tombs out there and protecting the things that are up there. Why? Because he knew, because the Native Americans, they trusted Charles, they believed in Charles, they knew Charles was a good man and he was going to protect the sacred gold, uh, sacred statues, sacred things on South Mountain. He understood about the spirits of the earth and sky, not a craft, it's not talking about crafts on this mountain here. It's not talking about crafts. If they're not carved any crafts here around this valley of the sun. There's not any crafts that are carved here. That's not the, what the legends say. The legends say entities. The, le the legends say spirits of the earth and sky. And that's exactly what these petroglyphs are talking about. They're depicting the phoenix lights because they've been here since the beginning of time. They're depicting the day sightings, not crafts, not little green guys in spaceships from Alpha Centauri, but living entities, living beings, okay? Just as man is su supreme, just as man is higher than the animals, is more intelligent than the animals, so are these things in the sky. They are more in intelligent, they are more higher <laughs> than man. So it was in the beginning, so it shall be at the time of the end. And that's the reason why these things are here, because, because, you know, the Native Americans say that we're in the fourth world. We're in number four, and we're getting ready to, to enter number five, into the fifth world. And each time, each time, the world changes, the world starts over again. 
These spirits of the earth and sky are here to help and also to mislead, uh, mislead mankind. You see, nobody knows exactly when the time of the end shall occur. Not even these things in the sky. Okay? But they know we're getting close. They know we're getting close. They understand this. You know, when you, when you look at prophecy, you can see prophecy has just been going out of crazy, crazy tempo pace. I mean, prophecy has been just going and going and going, and, and we're so close. We're so close. And that's the reason why these things are here in the sky now, because they are watchers. They are watchers of man. It's interesting because, you know, when, when we read First Thessalonians, it says, we will be caught up. We will be caught up to meet the Lord in the sky. And is this what happened to the Hoakam Indians? Were they here one day, gone the next? Were they caught up? Did the Phoenix lights? Did these things in the sky take these people away? Well, not only this tribe here in Phoenix, Arizona, but also other tribes other tribes around the world that happened at the same time. It happened at the same time. They were there one day, they were gone the next. Everything was, I don't know about fine, but they were here on earth. They ruled, they were, the Hocom were the masters of the canals. They were masters of this land. Until one day they up and vanished, disappeared, we don't know what happened to them. You know, Holbrook understood this, and, and the story goes on because, you know, he wrote this, uh, he wrote this um, brochure. He used to do tours on South Mountain. I did tours on, I do tours on South Mountain. I must have taken about 100 people up on the, on the, on the mountain here. And he passed out a flyer, which you can find this flyer on my website. And I found this in the Phoenix Government Department, in the Phoenix Library. This is how I found the history of Charles Holberg. This is how I found the lost history of Phoenix, Arizona, was in the Phoenix Library on the Government Department's fourth floor, buried in a file away from the public. Because Holberg understood about the tombs, about the sacrificing that was going on on South Mountain, he understood how this mountain was holy to the ancient ones. Let's get into a little, about, a little bit about what he says about this, about everything. Now, Charles Holbrook, the first park ranger of Arizona here, this is stuff you haven't heard about. This is stuff that hasn't been told in 80 years. You ready? Here we go. This is it. He says when the Indians first got here, the Holocoms, is that they didn't know how to live here. Now, it wasn't a, a dried up desert here. It wasn't a dried up desert. It, there's evidence that there was waterfalls on, on South Mountain. I mean, it was like a, a tropical-like landscape here in the Phoenix, Arizona. It wasn't all hot and dry and desert up. But when... The Native Americans got here, and it wasn't just the Hocoms, but also the Mayans. Now, it's very possible, it's very possible that the Mayans and the Hocoms are the same tribe. Because the story talks about the Mayans, the petroglyphs out here on, talks about the Mayans, and we also have something else that resembles... The carvings resemble, the stories resemble some of the Anunnaki some of the Anunnaki This is interesting. So is the Babylonian text. 
So is the Babylonian art. So is the Mayan art. So is the Holocom art. It all matches. And so does the story. We're going to get into that right now. So, when they arrived here in Phoenix, these things came up out of the sand world. Not spaceships, not little green guys from Alpha Centauri. They came up out of the sand world. Because why? A lot of people don't know this. Are you ready? You ready for the secret? You ready, ready for the secret? This is their planet also. They live here. They have always been here since the beginning of time. The Phoenix lights, the things we see in the sky today, the orbs, the flying worms, the flying snakes, the black orbs, the white orbs, the yellow orbs, the red orbs, I mean all these things, these crazy stuff we see in the sky today, this is their home also. They have always been here. Matter of fact, it's very possible, it's very possible that they were the first ones here before man. So, the Indians got here, the Holocom Indians got here, and they say that these things came up out of the sand world. Now, a lot of them say that the lizard people, the lizard people, came up out of the sand world, okay? And they lost their tails to look like everyone else. They taught the Holocom the secret ways. They taught the Holocom how to survive. In return, in return, the Holocom worshipped these beings, these spirits of the earth and sky. I understand why they call these things spirits, is because when I was watching them, I've been watching these things for 20 years now. I've been watching them coming and going from South Mountain. I've seen them all over the valley here, in the Valley of the Sun. I understand what these things are. I know, I know their purpose here. I know what's going on here. I have uncovered the secret. And this is the reason why I'm here today. I'm trying to get you in on the secret also and let you know what's really going on, what's really going on from history, from history. Not someone out there trying to sell movie tickets, not someone out there trying to sell you bogus information, but history. And this is what history says. History says they've always been here and they continue to be here. And so these things taught the Holocom the secret knowledge, the secret understanding. No. In return, they worship these things as gods. I found tons of altars out there. There's plenty of altars out there if you know what to look for. There's plenty of tombs out there if you know what to look for. And you can find all this stuff in my first book, Phoenix Lights, Petroglyphs in the Sky, True Stories, Myths, Legends, and UFOs Over Phoenix. This is the first book. It goes into the history that we're talking about now. It talks about Holbrook. talks about the first Native Americans. talks about the true history of Phoenix, Arizona that has been proven, proven not only by the city of Phoenix that's locked in a folder that, I've done, that I have uncovered, but also the hiking, the exploring I have done on South Mountain, understanding the petroglyphs, finding the altars, finding the, the tombs out there, understanding Charles Holberg, and understanding what the Phoenix Lights really is, what South Mountain is. And see, at the time, at the time, South Mountain was named Mount Sapoa. Mountain of Mercy. Mountain of Mercy. And tribes, tribes from all over, from all over the United States used to gather here at Mount Sapoa in this Valley of the Sun and watch the Phoenix Lights and watch these things and watch the spirits, watch their gods in the sky. Worship, trade, sacrifice. And I find it interesting because the story goes, the story says, Holbrook says, that a handful of gold for a handful of corn. That's pretty, 
Interesting. Now, they used to take these gold nuggets and they'd melt it down into idols and stuff like that. And, and they put them in little pouches. In leather pouches. And, and I call them banks out here. They put them in caves. I call them banks. So out here on South Mountain, there's a lot of caves out here that's full of little gold nuggets. Okay, it's left from, it's from the Mayans. I picked up your Phoenix Light Petroglyphs in the Sky. Two stories, myths, legends, and UFOs over Phoenix, Volume 1. Learn about the lost history of Phoenix, Arizona. Learn about the petroglyphs carved on the sacred mountain, now known as South Mountain, that holds the past to the Phoenix Light and the UFOs over Phoenix. Pick up your copy today. Phoenix Light, Petroglyphs in the Sky. True stories, myths, legends, and UFOs over Phoenix, Volume 1. Find it on eBay, Barnes & Noble, and any source where books are available at. South Mountain, and actually it turns out they're not alone because people have been visiting the mountain for a very long time, leaving strange marks on the rocks. ABC 15 Steve Filmer explains those to us. Most people that hike in South Mountain have seen a few of the rock art panels and they perhaps thought that they were graffiti. I've been seeing strange things coming and going from this mountain. There's some people that suggest that some of the rock art is associated with uh, alien visitations or spaceships or UFOs. Jeff Woolwine and Todd Boswick have never met. Sometimes I might see one around 9 o'clock. Two over here, too. Yeah, I turn. Both men are fascinated by South Mountain's ancient rock art. Are they telling us a story? Is there a connection in your mind between the petroglyphs on this mountain and the things you see in the sky near South Mountain? Yeah. Um, it could be. I propose that that is. Shot like a rocket and went pew, and then stopped and then started to go real slow. Whoa, look at that. That's an airplane, but what's that underneath it? Wow. Covering lights, strange shapes floating in the sky. Jeff videotapes them all, all on or above South Mountain from his apartment nearby. People ask me, do you think some of the rock art came from outer space? And I say, no, I don't think so, but I do think it came from inner space. Todd, he's the archaeologist for the city of Phoenix. I think that some of the rock art is related to events in the sky, but it's it's the, the sun, the moon, the planets. He will walk right past one, he won't even see it until the sun hits it just right. Boswick would agree with that. These photos show how he's unlocked a secret, how some of the petroglyphs on the mountain will line up with the sun exactly, year after year at precise times. So we find many examples of where there's a rock art panel and it is located exactly where the summer solstice will rise or set. But there's more, not just alignments, but daggers of light or shadow that highlight or interact with figures in the art. Again, at precise times of each year. Numerous examples, dozens, of light forms passing, or shadows, passing over an interesting and sometimes elaborate rock art panel on these special days, the solstices and the equinox. Wow! Lights, floating blobs of shadows, what? Jeff Woolwine's video camera yeah. captures its own stories on the mountain. There are strange things that are happening. He'll agree that these panels can evoke powerful experiences. Uh, there's been times when I've been sketching an ancient panel that's a thousand years old and it's a lizard design. And about halfway through my sketch, a lizard will come right over the rock and will pose right next to the one that I'm sketching. And, you know, it's almost a magical moment. Steve Filmer, ABC 15 News, your Valley News leader.
To the spiral topic, mm -hmm. uh, you said um, you know, like some people say that it was you know for water, and then other people might think that it's like emergent. That's correct. Yeah. Or a vortex. Yeah, or like a vortex. Yeah, or, or um, uh, and of course that's the big uh, feeling for native people is that we emerge from the earth. You know, the Hopis talk to us about we're in the fourth world. Right. Because, you know, basically what happened is we, we screwed up three times. And so I said, well, let's just start over again. So <laughs> here we are in the fourth world. Um, so that spiral then marking one of those emergence points into this world. And so oh. I kind of think of it like a tunnel, looking down into a tunnel or, like or maybe up into a tunnel to the next world for that matter. To the next world, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of different ideas of why they pick different places to do it. And what's, how come he's got a tail? Well, okay, that's our lizard man, all right? And, and, and we And so he's part of the tradition here. They say that he, uh, when the per people first got here, you know, they didn't know how to live in the desert. How do you live in this hot, dry desert? So the lizard people, Out of the sand world, their tails fell off. Right? So they looked like everybody else. And when they were done teaching, done teaching everybody they went back down into the sand world and they grew their tails back okay so that's a power symbol lizards are power symbols things like that because um, it's pretty powerful to be able to regenerate part of your body grow part of your body back again so they're power symbols and symbols for change and things like that and then often all oh, this guy doesn't demonstrate it very well often they'll have that little tummy on there which they call the gila bulge mm -hmm. And so when you see that little round tummy on them, a lot of the scientists think it's, it's a depiction of the chuckwalla lizard that lives here. Yeah, okay. I've seen those big yeah. lizards. Yeah, he's got they a big fat tummy. Too. Yeah, uh-huh. Uh -huh. And he's an iguana. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, he get, when he gets scared, he would run into the rock crevice, and he blows up like a balloon. Oh, so He's got okay. this little fat tummy then, all right? And that just lodges him in there. You can't pull him out or anything. Yeah. So that's his defense. So the scientists think, well, then that's a picture of the chuckwalla lizard. But our native people are talking about the lizard people that are the teachers. An emergence. Uh -huh. yeah. and, the, and the round tummy is not his tummy, but the hole, actually, that he's coming up into this world through. So when you see that little round tummy on there, he's halfway in our world, halfway in his world, basically, because he still has his tail. From like another dimension. Uh -huh. Exactly. Yeah. That's cool. Uh -huh. yeah. I like that yeah. story. And in, in Choctaw, I put those in the very early times, so I'd say like 700, 1300 years ago. 1300? Yeah. yeah. Again, and circles with dots in the center, that's often... Um, related to the astronomy stuff they were doing, star patterns and things. Okay. A hole? Yeah. And this one, you were talking about a, a bear, bear mask. Yeah, the bear mask. Uh -huh. And, uh... And, uh, you know, some people even say that the rings on those concentric circles are this first world, second world, third world, now we're up here in the fourth world. So. And they have tails also. Uh -huh. And then there's, there's the one that I like. Okay. With the two crosses. Uh -huh. And there's a line with that cross there on the right. And it seems to be coming out of that hole. Sure. Right? Yeah. And of course that's part of the interpretations now that they're thinking even the crevices and cracks that are on the rock surface probably may have played a part in what they were trying to tell. What story they were telling or information they're trying to give. And so some people again will say, Yeah, thanks. Thanks, we're back now. And, uh, you know, it's interesting, you know, no one has, uh, it's interesting because to this day, no one has actually been able to bring out a city archaeologist and talk about uh, the petroglyphs on the mountains uh, connected with UFOs and things like that. So, you know, my research has really accomplished a lot, you know, and uh, 
Can you believe that archaeologist, though? Now you see the type of people that we're dealing with here, okay? As, as he's saying, oh, you know, this wizard will come up and pose, and pose for me. Is this what the, you know, whole conjurers are talking about was these lizard people, you know? And at least he agrees with me. He agrees with me on these light shadow markers, you know, the, the equinox and the solstice. But a lot of archaeologists want you to believe that this is the time when they started planting corn. And that's not, that's not what they're talking about here. They're talking about the spirits. Because this is the secret. This is the secret that I have uncovered. No one taught me this. I learned this on my own. I lived over there by South Mountain for two and a half years. And I saw these things come and go from the mountain. And when I went out there, I looked. I looked to find some kind of crop circle, some kind of evidence that, were, that they were here. But what did I find? I found petroglyphs of stick figure man looking up the exact same thing that I filmed the day before. And what else, what else did I find? I found spirals. Now spirals are doorways. That's what Dave was telling you right there, that Native American shaman. He was telling you that, door, that spirals are, are, door, are doorways. And that crack, the crack is the entrance into the stone. And when the spiral aims down, it's either the stone, the crack of the spiral that's next to that, that's carved on that, on that uh, boulder there, or it's the ground. If the spiral ends up, then we're talking phoenix lights, those things just magically appear in the sky. There's a vortex, there's a door in the sky there. If the spiral is clockwise, it's a doorway in. If the spiral is counterclockwise, it's a doorway out. So where it is telling us, the whole comms have already documented all this stuff for us. We just simply need to understand, and I'm here to help you understand these petroglyphs. I'm here to help, I'm here to help you understand how to see these things in the sky. Now a lot of people have come over to me and they're like, dude, I was up on South Mountain, but I didn't see anything. So I asked them, what time did you go? Because it's important. What, what's the, uh, the, the date? What month did you go? Because it's important. Because just because you're up on South Mountain doesn't mean you're going to see something. If they follow the seasons, they follow the equinox and the seasons. For instance, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August are the hot times. And in between the equinox and the solstice, the equinox and the solstice, they follow the energy. The sun moves across the sky and why mountains? Why is South Mountain special? Why are they coming and going from this mountain? It's because South Mountain and most of the mountains around the Valley of the Sun was made by volcanoes and there's fault lines there. And these fault lines generate energy and that's what these things are after. They're after the energy. They're absorbing the energy. In 2004, I'm filming the lights on the east side of South Mountain. And right, right on that spot is a, is a power plant that's bored down into the fault line. And these, these lights, these entities, these Phoenix lights was attracted to that energy source on the east side of South Mountain. You can find this evidence on my website and uh, what, also in my second book when, it, when it's published. You can find some of the videos too on my Facebook page that show the lights right over the power plant. Now, back in the day when I found an old map of all the Holocom structures that the, uh, the pilgrims marked, they marked all the, they documented all the uh, Holocoms and all the structures that were left behind by the Holocom. That side on the east side, because the east side is special, the east side is holy. That's where the uh, uh, morning sunrise arises. Everything is oriented towards the east. The east is holy. And this is the exact same spot, the exact same spot on where the Holocoms made their city at was where this power plant on Ray Road sits today. You can find that map on my website. So that's telling me the Holocoms wanted to get as close as they could, as close as they could to their spirits, to their gods. They lived on South Mountain. They lived on certain places around the Valley of the Sun where these things would magically appear in the sky. They followed the equinox and the solstice. Now, I've been living here. I've been living here in this spot here in uh, Glendale, Arizona. That's just around the side of Phoenix here. And this is the area where I grew up at. 
And when I was a kid, I was seeing these things in the sky also. I remember playing football with my dad, and there was an orb in the sky right behind him. I remember seeing lights in the sky over here in this area where I grew up at. And I remember going to the school, to my grade school, and I talked to a friend of mine, and he was a little Native American boy. And I asked him, dude, did you see that light last night? And what does he say? He says, oh, yeah. My grandfather says, my grandfather says... They live in the mountains over there. And he pointed to the White Tank Mountains on the west side of Phoenix, Arizona. Who would have known that 20 years later, 30 years later, you know, I'd be talking about these things and proving it, proving it, proving it, and dug up the lost history of Phoenix, Arizona, and, and uncovered the tombs out here, and uncovered the real history of Phoenix, and understand what the Phoenix lights are, and what these things in the sky are. And these things like to follow the energy. So, when I'm sitting here, those, have, those of you that have been following me on Facebook, you know, you know that right before the summer solstice, I was filming a lot of them here. They were coming up right up to the sky here. They were coming at me. They were posing for us. I was getting great shots until after the summer solstice. We're in the summer now. And they're gone. They moved. They went somewhere else. And now people on the other side of the world are seeing them. People on, on the other side of the United States are seeing them. But I'm telling you, after the summer solstice, September 21st, September 23rd, after those dates, they're going to come back. They're going to start to come back. That's the secret on how to see these things, on how to predict these things. Okay? It's a, um, it's a, uh, um, whatchamacallit, I can't think of it now. It's a pattern. It's a pattern, okay? You have to understand the pattern to understand these things, to understand when, when you're going to see them next. And I'm telling you, the equinox and the solstice is the clue, is the key. So, if you're going out there looking for these spirits, first thing you want to do in your neck of, neck of the world, neck of the woods, wherever you live, doesn't matter, you know, if you live in Australia. doesn't matter if you live, you know, in Florida. Wherever you're living at, if you want to see if, uh, if spirits are in, is part of your history or not, first thing you want to do is you want to find out the Native American folklore of it. You want to look on, you want to find out if there's spirals carved on the mountains. Now, not all, not all petroglyphs are talking about these entities in the sky. Some are talking about Like, ceremonies. <laughs> Some are talking about ceremonies. So, not all petroglyphs are talking about these spirits of the earth and the sky. Some are talking about ceremonies. Some are just depicting hunting, gathering, the sunset, the deers, the birds, okay? That's all nice, that's all fun and dandy. But what we're looking for are spirals. So we find a mountain with spirals and lizard men and flying snakes and weird creatures, uh, supernatural entities, then that's a clue right there that you, that you need to start watching this mountain, understand that mountain, and, and understand, start hiking it more, and look for the tombs, because I guarantee you, I guarantee you, something's buried there, and it'd be great for you to come up and, and, and discover something. And when you do, and when you do, whether it's in your woods or whether it's here in Phoenix, Arizona, if you come out here to Phoenix and you dig up that tomb and you uncover it, let me know about it. That'd be great. Someone needs to go out there and dig up these tombs on South Mountain or we need to get the city of Phoenix to do it, but we need to go do it fast. We need to do it soon. At least one tomb we need to open up. Not all of them. Let's leave like all of them intact, but let's just open up one, just to see, just to verify it, just to be, you know, just to, to understand a little bit more here. It's our history, okay? So that archaeologist, you know, been, been dealing with that guy for years. 
And so Dave, the Native American uh, tarot, tarot guy, the shaman that I was talking with, now he was saying that the lizard men are power symbols. Okay? And he says that Tommy is is the lizard man halfway in his world and halfway out of out of and halfway in our world. Well, in in watching these things, okay, I believe that the orbs in the sky is the entity. These things shape shift. We're gonna go into that here in a minute. We're gonna show videos of the touch those. But I just want want to get you a heads up before we get into these videos. So let's let's take a look at these videos. Okay, as we look here, that was the that was the Phoenix Light spread that we just saw. Now this right here, this is what really really got in. This is how I knew I was right. You see these two two people up there, and they're looking at this flying this flying thing above their heads. Now this is what I brought to the news in 2005 that verified that verified that what I was talking about was correct. No one has ever documented this ever. I was the first one to prove that these things in the sky are talking about the petroglyphs on South Mountain. And notice how this thing shapeshifts. You see how that, see how it's shapeshifting there? This is not a crap that we're dealing with. These things are alive. They're living entities. Okay? You see that? This isn't a balloon. This was carved. The exact same thing was carved over a thousand years ago on South Mountain. And now they have returned. Why? Why are they back? Why are we seeing them now? And look how it's shape-shifting there. You see that? See how it's, see how it's, uh, it's just shape-shifting there? This is not a balloon. This is not technology. It's not, this is not Alpha Centauri. This is a living creature. This is a living entity that we are witnessing right now. That's in our skies today. Here, this is on. This is a petroglyph on South Mountain. All the petroglyphs on South Mountain are are are, are in what we're looking at here. And this right here, I'm sure everybody was talking about, but was thinking a whale. Now here we have a spiral up on top. Now this whale petroglyph is coming out of the spiral doorway. You see that crack up on top? Okay, that could be the doorway there. Then we have some lizard men over there to the right. We have some other depictions of another spiral, and the spiral is ending down on the right side there. Then we have another uh, petroglyph uh, to the right there. But this uh, whale, I want, I want you to concentrate on, because uh, I uh, was able to record this one day. I went up to South Mountain and I actually talked to these things. When you look at some of my videos, you'll see this video that I'm talking about. That I talked to these things and I asked them to come to see me. Well, about four hours later when I got down off the mountain, this well petroglyph entity came and saw me. It came out of South Mountain and uh, came and saw me as I was getting ready to enter a uh, local uh, um, uh, market to get a drink when I got off the mountain. Now here it is. This is the exact same thing that's carved on South Mountain. No one has ever done this before. No one has ever documented the exact same thing that's carved on the mountain thousands of thousands, over a thousand years ago, and now we're seeing it in the sky. This is why I call my research Petroglyphs in the Sky, is because that's what we're seeing in the sky today. These petroglyphs are entities are what we like to call UFOs. They are not spaceships. They are not crafts. They are living entities. Here's the video. That's kind of shaky. 
But you can see on how this thing is moving in the sky there. And it matches. It matches the petroglyph that we just saw on South Mountain. That petroglyph can be found on Holbert, Holbert Trail. It went right over the right over the, the building there. Now here we find some some uh, petroglyph art, okay, downtown Phoenix, Arizona. All right. Now they use this this type of uh, art, these these petroglyphs, and with the Indian art, and with the Indian art uh, that's decorated around the city of Phoenix. When you drive around Phoenix and Tempe and Mesa and Glendale, you can see all these Native American uh, paintings and stuff, especially on some of the freeways, okay? And it's talking about these entities, okay? Now, there we go. See the whale? And the whale is turning into a man. This whale that we just saw in the sky, this entity is morphing into a man. And this, this petroglyph was used. Here we go. Here's another, here's another depiction of it. That, that, this sighting here, this sighting here was used in the uh, pilot for the UFO Hunter show. And you can see that it matches, it matches that will, the head, the head of, the, of this entity, the head of this being, okay, and it, this will entity is turning into a man there. You see that? You see the, uh, the top of it, the shape? And look how it's, shape, it's shifting there, it's, it's changing shape. That's one of my favorite sightings there. Here again, here again, we have these crooked snake. We just watched, we just saw the crooked snake. That was the first video. Then we have these barbells. Then we have spirals, okay? And then we have these orbs. See all these little dots? Okay, that's what we're seeing in the sky today. And this is what's carved on South Mountain, okay? These barbells. Here's a guy there. Now, remember, it says that these things were carried away. There's a man hanging on to a barbell there. And there's orbs all around him. Is he being lifted up into the sky with a barbell? I think so. Is he being taken away by a barbell? I think so. Now look at this glyph here. You see the barbell formation on the right there? Now look at the guy on the bottom. He's looking through a window. So this is not a spaceship. This is a living entity. And, and he is absorbing himself around this man. You can see on how he's looking out the window there. He has his arms and his legs. And he's inside this barbell. And he's being taken away. He's being lifted up into the sky. Does he come back? I don't know. The legends say that the Indians did not come back, that they were taken away by these things. Now here's the barbell. I have filmed many barbells over South Mountain. Here's one of the videos. There are petroglyphs up there where it shows barbells are turning into men. Some of them look like bow ties, like a bow tie. And he's turning into like a shaman. He's like some kind of shaman. He has, he has a um, lightning bolt legs. His legs are in the shape of lightning bolts. And those lightning bolts represent power or energy. You can see how this barbell is just flipping around on itself. And these are, you know, you can clearly tell that these are not balloons. This, this is in control. They are in control. These things are alive. Look how it's flipping around like that. Nothing man-made can do this. This is a living entity. This is a living creature. This is part of our history. This is real. Not spaceships, little green guys, Mata Centauri, not getting our ass probed. But Things like this that's carved on the mountains that the Indians, the Indians are telling us about this, dude. They have been telling us since, man, since the white man first came on this land about these entities, about these spirits. But that's the problem. That's why nobody understands these things is because no one's listening to them. No one's taking them serious. But I think we better start. 
Because look what's flying in our skies today. Look what is going on in our skies today. Here we have a coyote on the left. We have a man on the bottom right. We have the lights. We have the lights up there in the top, upper right. Okay? This is carved on South Mountain. They saw the lights also. You can clearly see this. You can see the coyote there. You can see the man there on the bottom. And what is it? And here are the lights that I filmed in 2004. This is on the, on the uh, east side of South Mountain. And you can tell that these are not flares. If they were flares, they're supposed to be illumination flares. That means you would see the smoke. You would see the parachute. They would not... They would not stay in formation like this, so close together. They would drift apart, they would, they would, they would uh, 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 float down, but these things are staying motionless in the sky. No one has ever documented this stuff before, except for the Holocons. This hasn't been done in over a thousand years. I'm bringing you back the real history of the Phoenix Lights, the real history of Phoenix, Arizona, the real history of South Mountain, Mount Sapoa. I want you to realize how special this mountain is. Now, on South Mountain, you see this big, huge spiral, and you see this creature, this creature, coming out of the spiral. Look at that thing. Now, he's coming out of the, It's not some uh, spaceship. It's not some little, uh, uh, you know, uh, technology, or some other guy. No, it's, a, it's some kind of animal. It's some kind of creature. Now, I had no idea. Once I photographed this thing, when I photographed that petroglyph, when I took videos of it, I didn't know that this thing was going to come and see me a couple days later and here it goes this thing came and saw me and, it brought, and he brought a friend with him April 13th of 2005 these petroglyphs has the power to invoke the spirits and that's exactly what I've accomplished here I have proven this these things are alive these things follow the earth and the sun they follow the equinox and the solstice. This is the secret. This is the clue. Spirals. Petroglyphs of these entities in the sky. Now here's one. Here's one that, that I'm kind of afraid of. And we'll talk about this in the, in the next uh, segment here. But you see that there? That's the exact same thing that's carved on South Mountain out there. And those you, know, those you want to look out for. And we'll talk about that in the next segment. Look at that thing. This is not technology that we're dealing with here. It's not a flying saucer. It's not a uh, uh, little, it's not, you know, uh, little green guys, okay? These are living entities. And look how they're, they're, they're staying in motion right there. I mean, they're staying in formation. Okay, so here we have a petroglyph here. Now on the right, we see what looks like a square head. Now this guy, is, he's kind of like a lizard man. Okay, and he's, the, he's in, the appease, in the appeasement pose. Okay, his arms are up, much like what we do when we see these things in the sky. Here's a closer look at him. Okay, now his head is like a, a bowl. All right? Now he's actually, this thing is actually a UFO. Okay, but we would, what we would call a UFO. And he's morphing into a man. Here's what flew over uh, South Mountain here in January 18th that I filmed when I was on South Mountain. And I saw this thing flying. Ah, uh, yeah, something, uh, I don't know. Over the mountain. And, I, and he went down on the mountain. He went into a doorway. And you can see how it's uh, like a square bowl. He's a bowl. Now that matches the exact same uh, head of that petroglyph as he's morphing into a man. That's what these girls are doing. They're changing into a man, so they morph. They, they, they look like people. They look like men. They look like humans. They look like flying snakes. They look like uh, like uh, animals, if you will. Okay, and they, they take shape and form. And that's exactly what was going on there. Here is the old uh, flying serpent, and we have two men looking up at a flying snake. 
Okay, now, when I was out there, this is, this is on South Mountain. Now, here's this other panel that I was talking about earlier. Okay, so there's a man on the, on the left over there, and uh, he's got four arms, and he's got this staff, and he's shooting, he's shooting with this staff up there at a flying humanoid, or a flying uh, serpent. Here we go. See that guy there, Quetzalcoatl, if you will? Now, he's oriented that way. Now, when you look, uh, rest, uh, look on the rest of this panel here, you can see other serpents there. You can see an orb. You can see a man there with a bow and arrow, and he's shooting, he's shooting at these things in the sky. So they were going to war with these spirits of the earth and sky. And here it comes right at you now. Here we can see what they're talking about. Yeah. When I was up on South Mountain, what happened? What happened? This is what happened. When I was on South Mountain, I discovered that petroglyph. It's on a yeah. canyon. It's on this uh, canyon. And I asked them, I asked them, you know, I haven't seen you guys. Why don't you guys come and see me? I haven't seen you guys. And about a few days later, this thing came out of the canyon where I was sitting at only a few days before, came out of the canyon, we went west, we climbed a thousand feet, then it started to come east and came right over, over to my head. Came right over to me. I started filming it. It was the exact same serpent, the exact same serpent that I had saw carved on the mountain only a few short, short days uh, before. These petroglyphs have the power to invoke the spirits, and that's exactly what I've done. And I've proven this. I've proven this. I've documented everything. Look at that thing. You can actually see him walking in the sky here. You're going to see him walk. This is not technology. This is a living being. This is a living creature. We're dealing with living entities here. See that? He's looking at the mountain. Now he's kind of looking at me and he's shape shifting a little bit. He does it. He looks at the mountain, then he looks at me. And he went over the apartment that I was living at and he stayed there for the longest time until, until airplanes scared him away. And when that happened, he went over the city and he went into Camelback Mountain. The pentagloves on the rocks has the power to invoke the spirit, the spirits. Charles Holbrook knew this. Charles Holbrook knew all about this. And the thing that upsets me the most is after his death, after his death, they buried, they buried all his information. They took all his information and they put it in the Phoenix Library, away from the public eye. The city of archaeologists doesn't talk about Charles Hobart, doesn't talk about the lions, doesn't talk about the tombs, doesn't talk about the giants, doesn't talk about any of, of the truth that's here in Phoenix, Arizona, that history backs up, that I've, that I've proven. He doesn't talk about this stuff. They buried this information. Sure, they named uh, Charles Holbert uh, Trail after Charles Holbert. They named the uh, Lookout Point where Charles used to look for people looking for the gold tombs on South Mountain. They named that uh, Charles Lookout, but that's about it. The rest of his information has been buried for 80 years. And I discovered this in the government in the government library department. And I verified, I verified everything. I brought this information that hasn't been talked about in many years to me. I'm resurrecting this information. I'm writing the truth of history of Phoenix, Arizona, of Mount Sapoa, of the Valley of the Sun. This is the history. These flying serpents, these flying entities, giant tombs. This appearance, this is the truth. Here again, over Trump, we see a man looking up at a snake. Now, this petroglyph is oriented up, so the artist wants us to look up because he's telling us that he saw. This, this shaman with this billy goat saw a flying snake in the sky. And that's how you're supposed to interpretate, interpret these uh, petroglyphs. You're not just supposed to look at, the, uh, look at the art, but you include the whole landscape in with the art. Because the, uh, the artist is including uh, the landscape in with the art. Now here again, we have this lizard. Now look at the giant. He's a giant. See? There's a regular man on the bottom right, but he has his 
a dot. He has his belly, and his in his belly has this dot. You see this orb? Here's another petroglyph. He's got this orb. He's got this uh, uh, belly. Now this is the orb. This is the orb that we're seeing in the sky today. When we see these white UFOs, when we see these white orbs, when we see these yellow orbs, when we see the Phoenix lights, these orbs, okay, it's talking about these things. These things shape shift into man. Here we go again. Here we go again. There's an orb. There's a spirit UFO there, and he's he's morphing into a man. Okay, he's changing. He's shape shifting into a man. That's a secret. This is a secret. I'm, I'm revealing it to you. Now here again. Here's a giant. You see? So are these the left land that the Bible is talking about? Look at the man on the bottom right. Now look at the big giant on the top. See, it's a regular man. But yeah, he's standing next to a giant. And this giant is actually a UFO to us, an orb. He's morphing into a man. Now look at this. This was filmed by outside my door. I found many orbs. This is the common sighting, mostly. Are these orbs in the sky? We see the red lights. We see the red orbs. We see the white orbs. We see the black orbs. This one's this one's interesting. I don't think I've ever seen a yellow orb until I, I witnessed it, until I filmed it um, a few months ago. This is it here. You can tell it's not a balloon. It's not acting like a balloon. It's moving forward. There's no strings. It's not acting. It's going against the wind. It actually stops in the sky, and then it uh, moves right, and then it goes back to where it comes from. But this is what the petroglyphs is talking about. It's talking about, you see those bellies? You see the lizard man, and he's got this belly. Okay? And he's morphing into a man. That's what the Indians are trying to tell you, is that these orbs in the sky are morphing into a man. A lizard man. A giant. The Nephilim. And we are seeing it in our skies today. So what does that say about our future? If the Holocaust saw these things back in their day, and they disappeared with no trace, then what does that say about our future? Because we're seeing them now in the sky. They have yet to come down, and what did I say earlier? They are simply watchers. They are watchers in the sky. They are waiting. They are waiting until mankind needs them one more time to survive. The Hopi say we're in the fourth world. We're getting ready to enter the fifth. And every time a new world occurs, these things are there to help and to mislead mankind into thinking that these things are supernatural gods when in fact they're not. They are not our creators. They are not our saviors. They are not what a lot of people seem to misinterpret these things are. They're not crafts. They're not here to help us. They want us to be their slaves again. They want us to worship them again. And we will be forced. The people who, who survive this Holocaust will be forced. They won't have a choice. Let him, under, let him, let him who understand reckon the beast and his angels that are upon the earth. Because that's what we are dealing with here. And you will either be forced, you will either worship these things as a god, or you will be killed right there on the spot. Somebody said, oh, I can't wait till the fifth world comes. I don't think you really want to be around when that happens, man. Because, uh, you know, what does history say about our, our history? I mean, what does history say about all this? It says... It was bloodthirsty giants. It says that these Nephilims took the brides of, of took the women for brides, and out come forth giants. Okay, it says that mankind worshipped these things as God. They they performed sacrifice, children to these things in the sky. This is our history, folks. This is what's really going on. Not some little green guy in a spaceship from Alpha Centauri trying to abduct us, trying to abduct us, trying to teach us that, uh, oh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cure cancer for you. No. It's our history, and this is it. It's carved on the mountains. Probably where you're at, if you look at your history. 
See the orb there? He's turning into a man. The petroglyphs is talking about this orb. And he's shape-shifting into a man to mislead us. Not to help us, to mislead us. But then again, we must look back in some of the old scrolls where it does say that the great creator has used these beings to help mankind in many ways. Was it a star that led the people to Bethlehem? Or was it one of these phoenix lights? Did they see a phoenix light in the sky and follow that light until they found one of the prophets known as Jesus Christ? Now here we go. Here we have, see these animals here next to the spiral? Now we know that this is not a regular animal because look at his feet. See the way their feet are, are, are turned the other way there? Now this is what the archaeologists like to call an anthropomorph. Okay? And you can tell he's got lines going down the belly there. Now this is an entity. This is one of these creatures. And they're coming out of the spiral doorway there. Here we go. You can see a little bit better. All right? Now here we have another one. Okay, this is what I was talking to you, telling you about. We have these men looking up at, at a flying uh, animal. This animal is in the sky. Is this what the uh, uh, Israelites made a calf about? Was this their God that they saw in the sky while Moses was away on the mountain and never came back for a while? And they decided to make this guy their God and they, they made this idol about this thing? Is this the creature that they're talking about here in our sky? I think so. Look at this. This is not balloons. This is in control. This is a lie. This is a living being. Look at it. Look how it's moving. You will not see anything else man-made on this earth that moves the way this entity does. This is what the Ho'okam saw. This is what the Ho'okam recorded on the mountain. This is what many tribes around the world saw in the sky, were these living entities. And they do produce lines. Now these lines, it's, it's, we're going to talk about this uh, in our next segment. Lines do come out of them. And when that happens, you might want to look out because that's when uh, they start taking, uh, taking people up. We'll talk about this. We'll talk about this in our next video. But you won't see anything else man-made like this. Look how it's moving. Look how it's moving across the sky. This is not natural for you and me. This is not made for us to understand. This is something a little bit different. Not nets and bolts technology. Not a spaceship. Not a craft. This thing is alive. It's intelligent. It knows who's watching and who's not. It understands. This is their home too. They live here too. They are higher than man. Just as man is higher than the animals, so are these things higher than man. Here we go again. Here we go. We look up at this thing, this thing in the sky. Okay, depiction of a man looking at this uh, flying spider looking thing in the sky this thing flew by my window in 2005 this made video of the day on news channel 3 this thing is alive and if you look closely you can see he's got like a type of skin on him it's something that I saw when I was living in New York during the uh, no fly zone during 9-11 I saw the exact same thing flying over my apartments uh, in 2001. And I come out here to Phoenix, Arizona and I find the petroglyph out here. Now here's a painting, here's a painting from, uh, what is it, the 1800s I believe, maybe a little bit later. Um, I believe it's in Germany and you can see the jacks. You can see the flying jacks, you can see the, the orbs, okay, and you can see the Phoenix lights there, the orbs there, the black orbs the orange and the blue orbs and the yellow orbs, you can see that, and the scrolls, okay, and some of them coming down the earth. So that, that painting has been around, and it's just so happened that we find the exact same petroglyph panel on South Mountain out there, in some rubble 
that's uh, uh, the CCC uh, back in the 1940s, right before World War II, has blown up Civil Conservation Corps. And that was made under their, uh, President Roosevelt under the New Deal before World War II. They went in there and they blew up all the petroglyphs to get rid of the story. We'll go on to that a little bit later in the show. Here we go, and here we have a spiral. Right? Now have this lizard coming out of the spiral. Now, I understand why the Native Americans call these things spirits, because when they get close to these doorways, when they get close to the doorways, you can see through them. They're like ghosts. And as they either come out of the door, or they, when they come, start to come out of the door, as this, is, as this is depicting, they become more solid. Now you can see a man there on the bottom. He's looking up at this thing. Here we go. We can see the outline of the lizard. This lizard is coming out of this spiral doorway. Okay, so he's, he's, half, he's half spirit. He's a spirit form. He's a ghost. But as he becomes more out of, the, out of the spiral, he becomes more solid. That's exactly what these entities do on South Mountain. When they come into, the, when they start to, to uh, come down on South Mountain, you can, you can see um, they're, they're solid. They shape shift. They're changing colors. They're solid. But as they get closer to the mountain, closer to the doorway, they start to disappear. They disappear. They look like a spirit, and they absorb themselves into the rock. I have filmed this many times. Now, we're talking about the Holocaust and how they disappeared. And they say that the devil, that these things came down from the east and took these people away. Now, this, this petroglyph here, we see this orb on top. And he's got this line. This line is coming down. This is depicted on South Mountain here. And he's picking up this man, and he's carrying him off into the sky. And this is why I'm saying that we really need to be careful uh, what we're doing here with these things and understand these things is this is what happened to the Holocom. Or is this, these Phoenix lights and these things in the sky that we're seeing today actually took the people who dealt with these, these things thousands of years ago and took them up in the sky never to return. There is, there is a, a written record of it. They didn't have stone bowlers back then. Or excuse me. They didn't have video cameras back then to record uh, their sightings. They had stone bowlers. And this is exactly what they're telling us. Now here it says in Genesis 6 that these things came down in the sky and they took the, they took the, uh, the women as brides. Now here we see a depiction on, of South Mountain where we see a, a female and she's in the menstrual uh, uh, period as she's uh, bleeding there. And it's attracting, it's attracting not only animals, but these spirits of the earth and the sky. You can see it on both sides there. So it's attracting these things. These, these animals, and it's attracting the spirits. Okay, now here we go. Here, here are the, uh, uh, the crooked snake, or the bent snake, uh, that we saw earlier, the earlier video of that. And these men looking up at these uh, crooked snakes in the sky. Okay, now this is the exact same type of crooked snake that we're finding over here on the right here. Okay, and, and it seems to be attracted to the uh, girl carving there that's uh, having a menstrual uh, period. On South Mountain. Now here's when we see these petroglyphs. When I see these petroglyphs, this scares me. This right here scares me because when I see these glyphs, these petroglyphs, whether he's turning into a lizard man, because most of them, you know, that's just the legs and the tail. And you see, he has no arms, he has no belly, he has no head, but he's just got this pitchfork, if you will. Now this is scary because these are the type of things that are picking people up, okay? These are the type of petroglyphs that are carrying people up into the sky. Where are they coming back or not? I doubt it. But this is what I, I label, I, I put danger on here because this is, this, these kind of petroglyphs scare me. Now here, here's a petroglyph on Box Canyon on South Mountain, right? So we see this entity on the right side coming out of the spiral doorway. Okay, now look at this. See the pitchfork? Now he's picking up this man. He's picking up this man by his head. And he's carrying him off into the sky. Does he come back? I doubt it. So this is why I'm saying that we need to be careful about these entities because this is proven, this is a proven record of what happened to the Holocaust. Now here, this is a petroglyph high up on South Mountain. This is on Holbrook Trail on one of the hills up there overlooking the city. And what is it showing? It's showing a bowl, or like a bowl that we just saw earlier and, there, and, and another orb, another orb to the upper right. We have a bowl on the left and an orb to the right. And they're picking, they're picking people up. They're carrying them off into the sky. 
why. This is overlooking Phoenix, Arizona. This is our true history. Now here we have these entities and it looks like it's, it's hitting this man. And as it does, it's decapitating this man. It's blowing this man's head off. We have the uh, bow tie spirit on the left. We have another spirit coming in and killing this man. This is why I'm saying this is dangerous stuff that we're dealing with. This is the reason why the people are the uh, the government and the archaeologists are not telling us the truth about these things. Is because this is the real history of Phoenix, Arizona. Here we go again. We see a man hanging onto a barbell. We see these orbs all over in the sky here. Is he being carried off into the sky and never to return? Very possible, because that's what the legends say, what happened to the Holocombs, is they were caught up, they were taken away by these spirits of the earth and the sky. Here again. Now this is interesting. We see this spectacle here on South Mountain. And he resembles a lizard man. Same as the uh, Sumerian texts. Sumerian carvings. We can see the exact same carvings as we do uh, in, the, in the Sumerian art. Now this was filmed, I filmed this thing on the right uh, above South Mountain in uh, 2018 and you can see on, on how he's got like a um, he's like a man okay and then on the left uh, my friend Heather uh, uh, donated this, this photo to me and it's a petroglyph of these uh, of these uh, petroglyphs of the guys with the antennas that's the exact same type of thing that I filmed over South Mountain that's why I call this petroglyphs in the sky now here we have a cross okay we have this man uh, on the bottom left and he's He's holding the cross and he's waving to us. And there's another man inside this cross. Now I filmed that, that flying orb cross. It was an orb, then it was a cross, then it was an orb, then it was a cross. I believe in 2005. It flew right at me. And you can find this video on my YouTube, on my YouTube page and also on my, uh, on my Facebook page. And, and so that's basically what we're dealing with, dealing with here. This is not some kind of spaceship. These are, these are uh, living entities. And, uh, this, and uh, this is what the real history of the Holocom is talking about. Now you can find more information uh, in my book, uh, Phoenix Lights, uh, Petroglyphs in the Sky, True Stories, Myths, Legends, and UFOs Over Phoenix. Now it goes, in, it goes into a little bit about Holberg, okay, it goes into, it, it's like a magical story. It's a, an adventure story, and it talks about... Um, Phoenix, Arizona, and as the reader uh, reads the story, it takes you on a magical journey through through time. It brings you into the Holocom era. It takes you back into time, and it shows you photographs. It tells you the legends. It talks about the ghosts. We'll get into that a little bit later on, maybe some of the next shows. But it talks about all these these, these things that hasn't been told in 80 years. So I just want to say, I want to wrap it up. It's been a wonderful journey with you tonight. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, please message me, email me, uh, leave, leave the comments on this. And, uh, you know, if you have anything, uh, if you found anything that looks good, please send it to me. And if I like it, I'll show it on my, uh, on my uh, show here. But I just want to say, uh, you know, see you next time. And uh, thanks for watching. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll see you guys next time. Okay, that's a wrap.
until the next exciting episode, keep your eyes in the skies. You never know what you might see.